good morning morning good morning nalini uh, we'll start in 2 uh, to 3 minutes uh, today the class will be moderated by you and dr vinay and dr kulbushan okay i'll be some out of station today is that of abdominal compartment syndrome. Okay, abdominal compartment syndrome uh, is uh, the presence of elevated intra-abdominal pressure that's commonly recognized. Anagiri, you are a co-host. Just uh, share your, the slide which is uh, showing the topic name, the management of the carcinoma esophagus. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, and are you going to try? Sir, can you uh, can you see the these things? Yeah, so, I can make it in PPT mode and just first slide. Uh, make it in uh, full screen. This was where the last time it was stopped, sir. Actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. uh, let's wait for around two minutes. Then we'll start. Okay. Sir. Dr. Nalini, you can start and Vinay, Dr. Vinay is joining in shortly. Oh, okay. Last class, uh, the summary of my case presentations. I'll, I'll start, sir. Dr. Nalini? Dr. Nalini, your voice is not clear. to all uh, today we will continue our previous session which was left uh, midway between so uh, today we uh, anagiri will discuss further management of that same patient uh, of diagnosed case of esophagus anagiri you can continue yes sir yes. sir uh, last case my yeah. case presentation yeah. summary yeah. Excuse me, Vinay. I'll be leaving uh, Dr. Vinay and Dr. 
Nalini will moderate the further session. Okay. Yes. Thank you, sir. Sir, shall I continue? Sir? Yan Nagri, please continue. Uh, sir. Uh, last case, my case summary was a 65-year-old lady with no comorbidities and a chronic tobacco chewer comes with complaints of short duration progressive dysphagia initially for solids later progressed to liquids since two months with associated significant loss of weight and appetite with ECOG performance status score of one and poor dental hygiene with unremarkable neck, chest and abdominal examination. My provisional diagnosis were malignant dysphagia, secondary to carcinoma esophagus or carcinoma GE junction. So your provisional diagnosis is um, dysphagia secondary to malignant cause. Yes, sir. And probable di provisional diagnosis is carcinoma esophagus bar carcinoma GE junction. Yes. Can you differentiate between these two separate entities by on the basis of clinical uh, scenario? Stree? Uh, no, no, sir. Extremely difficult, sir. Actually, uh, she gave complaints more of. Uh, uh, Sticking or uh, dysphagia in the lower chest, sir. Actually, something is sticking in the lower chest. Depending on that, I've made these two diagnoses, sir. But clinically, yes, sir. On basis of history and physical examination, it's extremely difficult to diagnose. Okay. Then how how will you proceed for this case, sir? I would like to get two sets of investigations, sir. One to just see the general performance uh, condition of the patient, and second set of investigations to confirm my diagnosis, sir. Okay. And then proceed okay. further, sir. So okay, continue. So these are the general blood investigations, sir. Uh, all the blood investigations remain uh, unremarkable, sir. Uh, hemoglobin is twelve point one, and her LFT remains normal. Even her albumin is three point five, and then urea rate is normal, and her electrolytes are also normal, sir, with no dehydration status actually. So, depending upon these blood investigations, her general condition seems to be uh, uh, relatively normal. Then I would like to proceed further to get uh, upper GI endoscopy and confirm my diagnosis. Uh, yeah, first, first preference would be upper GI endoscopy to confirm my diagnosis. Do we have upper GI? This was the upper G endoscopy report, sir, which was done here. Uh, they found an ulceroproliferative constrictive circumferential growth seen at the lower end of esophagus. They have not mentioned the distance from the incisors, sir. And as it was a completely circumferential growth, the scope could not be negotiated further. They could not tell us exact uh, length and extent of the uh, carcinomatous growth, sir, actually, in this report. So it was uh, a bit uh, relatively incomplete report sir i would like to know the length of the esophagus till what extent it has extended uh, and also to see whether there are any uh, skip lesions beyond this esophageal growth and uh, but multiple biopsies were taken sir but the growth uh, per se as such looks more of a malignant growth sir. Yeah, so uh, uh, after this investigation, how you will confirm uh, the uh, uh, lower extent of this tumor? You have sir, upper can... GI. Yes, sir. COVID <clears throat> not negligible beyond the uh, lesion. So we lesion, are not yes, sure whether the lesion is reaching up to which uh, extent. Yes. So we want that extent or not? Yes, sir. We want the extent, sir. To plan Why? for further surgical. Is it going to yes, change sir. your surgical plan? How? Yes. Uh, uh, sir, the extent of tumor resection can be planned, sir, actually, depending upon the length. And also the length of the tumor can also tell us, determine uh, whether we should go for an eodjuvant chemo radiation therapy or <laughs> upfront surgery also. Is it so? Have you read something, uh, uh, something like this in somewhere in the book? That written uh, the extent of the tumor will determine the neurogen course. Sir, actually, uh, the length, 
the length of the segment if it is more than 4 cm uh could also uh, can can make the lesions go for neoadjuvant chemotherapy have red selection and also to know the extent till up to whether it is involving the ge junction or not and the cardiac region of the stomach so your answer should plan ask. your answer should be in this way that the extent of the tumor will determine because you are you are planning to make a gastric tube na you yes, want sir. to replace esophagus with colon or stomach if you are stomach. replacing stomach with colon then the extent of the tumor doesn't matter it will not change yes. your plan but if you are yes. planning esophageal replacement by stomach making a stomach tube then definitely you you are more uh, keen towards the laser sac or greater curvature sir actually uh, greater curvature of the stomach why i mean cardiac region and lesser curvature of the stomach involvement i'll see sir to make the gastric tube and other things to know the extent of resection uh, uh, in the stomachs distally okay. so we have, so uh, we have, can, can we have the biopsy of the tumor do we uh, have sir, yes yes it was moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma sir okay now how will you proceed further sir i would like to stage the disease first sir actually uh, i would like to stage the disease using ct scan sir ct scan of head neck um, chest neck chest and abdomen to to stage the disease and uh, plan further management okay go ahead um, sir i want to show a videos of the this thing sir actually Answer. Yeah, yeah, please. and this is not the one sir one sir yes sir this is a contrast uh, oral plus iv contrast uh, ccd of we are not so, able to see your ct videos so. now we can able to see yeah yeah please <clears throat> so this is a oral plus iv contrast uh, ct of neck chest abdomen sir and uh, if you follow up uh, there's a <clears throat> bronchus which remains normal and uh, remarkable neck examination with no multiple enlarged or uh, more than 1 cm lymph node seen sir the esophageal lumen is seen sir just behind the trachea and then there is a contrast filling which seems to be normal esophageal lumen appears to be normal till this level sir and then at the bifurcation of the trachea just below the bifurcation of trachea there is a circumferential wall thickening of the esophagus where the contrast is seems to be still passing through the esophageal lumen there is a minimal contact with the left bronchus here in this case sir there is abutting of the left bronchus but not completely infiltrating the left bronchus and the iota seems to be <clears throat> uh, maintaining a well uh, fat plane between the iota and the mass seems to be maintained well sir and then the tumor was extended the circumferential wall thickening seems to be extending uh, towards a long segment sir and here near the pericardium and the arch of iota there is uh, just a minimal contact but no infiltration sir once near the g junction oh, not not now sir here from here the uh, the tumor seems to be uh, ending just above the g junction level sir 1 to 2 cm most probably and the contrast seems to be filling into the stomach and the appeared liver surfaces seems to be normal there are no uh, deposits nodules or ihbrd and the liver density appears to be normal sir and coming back uh, to the intraperitoneal lesion abdominal lesion here the celiac area where the celiac artery is arising near the trifurcation there seems to be no major a uh, multiple enlarged lymph nodes seems to be there sir actually and rest of the intraperitoneal examination of the ct scan remains unremarkable
and there is a, just a contact minimal with the iota but there is no infiltration of the iota so the fat plane seems to be well maintained between the iota and the mass and the lesion seems to be starting just below the bifurcation of the trachea sir just at the level of this bifurcation there seems to be a circumferential wall thickening of the esophagus okay fair enough i have uh, I, other videos also sir uh, can i show it yeah yeah please Yes. This is a sagittal section, sir. <coughs> so, uh, appear to pulmonary lung fields appear as normal, sir. And there is an iota seen actually. And there is proximal dilatation of the esophagus with contrast filling up the esophagus. And then there is a, a circumferential wall um, mass density seen. And there is thin column of contrast which is moving through the uh, uh enlarged segment sir and just beyond that uh, there is minimal involvement of left sided bronchus is seen at this juncture the, here there can you can see the left bronchus is, seems to be minimally abutting by the tumor but not completely infiltrating the tumor sir as such and then there is a huge growth which is noted below that and then the pericardium also seems to be slightly abutted here at this point, wherever there is uh, even the involvement of the left bronchus is also seen. And then the contrast seems to be filling up the esophagus, I mean, sorry, stomach, sir. And then the appeared the G junction seems to be uh, normal. Sir. Here in this case, the G junction seems to be normal. And then the uh, contrast seems to be uh, going into the stomach. And there is a very uh, minimal uh, luminal, I mean, lumen, lumen present, sir, with uh, dense circumferential wall thickening of the esophagus with circumferential growth. Appeared liver surfaces are normal, sir, and the rest of the peritoneal examination is also normal. Sir. Do we have the report of this CT scan? Yes. You want to show you want to show some more videos or yes, sir. I have some more videos also. Sir. Uh, this is again same video as sir. Uh, sir. Here the growth is okay. with the contrast seems to be there, sir, with diffuse circumferential wall thickening. The esophageal lumen is dilated and there's a huge mass noted over the uh, okay. approximately lower and mid thoracic of mid thoracic esophagus. Below the junction, uh, there is normal contrast filling up of the lumen of the esophagus sir, below. And then uh, after that, it is passing through the G junction properly. And then the G junction seems to be uninvolved and it is normal. So there is no wall thickening and the contrast seems to be going into the stomach normally. Uh, one more video, sir. Uh, no, it's fair last because... The... Yeah, yes. Yes. Is there something different mm -hmm. from that in that video? Or it's same? Uh, uh, no, sir. No, sir. same. Sir. Okay, so it's good quality video. So we we can very well appreciate that the tumor is arising approximately uh, just below the carina, and it yes, is sir. reaching just above the G junction. Yes, your findings are same now. So do we do we have uh, that uh, CT scan report? Yes, sir. We have. Uh, this is an ultrasound report, which is normal, sir. This is a CCT of the chest. Concentric irregular uh, actually esophageal wall thickening involving mid thoracic and lower part of the esophagus extending from D4, D5 to D10, D11, causing significant luminal narrowing, resulting in proximal holdup of oral contrast. However, distal passage of contrast is seen with thickening closely abutting the pericardium and subcarinal region of the bron bronchus with indistinct fat plane. Maximum thickness is 14 millimeters and length of the involved segment is around approximately 11.5 centimeters, likely to be neoplastic. And there are subplural fibrotic bands and uh, ground glass haziness in the bilateral lobe and otherwise the rest of the heart media syndrome trachea and other things are all normal. 
and uh, this is abdomen uh, thing also sir the mass abutting the left bronchus they have given the arc of contact with the aorta is 25 percent and maximum diameter is 4.4 to 3.5 centimeters and the length of the involved segment is around approximately 10 centimeters sir. there are few sub centimeter precarinal and paraesophageal lymph nodes which are noted actually and uh, this is a whole abdomen ct where uh, all the things are normal, sir. Only right kidney shows minimal cortical cyst in the mid pole. Apart from that, liver surface appears normal. There are no multiple lymph nodes or peritoneal deposits noted in the abdominal CT scans. So, what next? Come right on. now, you have the diagnosis. You have confirmed your diagnosis with the help of upper GI and biopsy. So, it is yes. a moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. Mid or lower yes. esophagus, yes. starting from the mid to lower esophagus, and yes. CT scan is showing there is an abutment with the left bronchus and left pericardium. Sorry, However, sorry. the yes. fat plates with the outer is maintained. Man, yes. So, depending yes. upon all these investigations, yes. now how will you proceed further? You have already diagnosed the case. You have already staged the case. Yes. Sir. It it, so it looks like a locally advanced uh, CA is uh, CA is of a surgery. So I would like to go ahead with neoadjuvant chemo radiation therapy, followed by surgeries. Okay. So the patient is right now under chemo radiation, or already he got yes, sir. everything. No, she is under chemo radiation. Okay. So what regime? You advise uh, her, na, Radha Devi, her for chemo radiation, yes, near urgent radiation. Uh, I would like to give cross trials, sir. Uh, that is carbopatin paclitaxel with uh, concurrent radiotherapies, 41.4 grays of radiation. How much time? Duration of the chemo radiation? Sir, uh, actually, it is uh, for uh, six weeks, sir, actually. Followed by which uh, we'll give, uh, we'll wait for six weeks and then plan for surgery. Okay. Do we have other some other regimes also for this squamous cell carcinoma? Yes, yes sir. We have. Uh, uh, we can. We can use uh, preoperative chemotherapy, sir, uh, with magic trial ECF regimen, triplet drug regimen, and there are flu fluoropyrimidine based drug regimens also. And there is a DCF regimen, docetaxel, cisplatin, fluorouracil. Since it is a squamous cell carcinoma, radiation therapy would be uh, much better. I mean, better regimen comparative to preoperative chemotherapy alone. Okay. So uh, let's assume that after six weeks, after completion of the chemo radiation, uh, that patient again will come back in your OPD. Yes. So. At that moment of time, how will you proceed further? How will you stage the patient, whether this patient is a responder to near urgent therapy or not? Yes, sir. The best modality would be PET CT to <clears throat> just see the near urgent chemo radiation therapy and the pathological clinical response also. Sir. And the modalities we can use is PET CT, CT, and uh, ultrasound guided biopsy. Sir, I would like to confirm it with uh, PET CT scan to know the response and then proceed further. Sir. It should be in a manner, Anagiri. Okay. Yes, it has to be in a manner now. How you will restage the patient or how will you check the response? It has to be clinical, then radiological, then biological. It has to be in a manner now. It can't be yes. like this, sir. I will advise PET, then I will advise USG guided FNAC. Yes, okay. So, okay. Sir, Again, clinically, I'll assess the patient condition, sir. The improvement in the symptoms. Improvement in her dysphagia and compared to uh, before chemo radiation therapy, clinically I'll assess that. So, radiologically, I would like to get a PET CT scan sir, to know the uh, radiological response of the tumors. Okay, if you let's assume that if you will do a endoscopy post chemo radiation yes. and uh, yes. there there will be no visible tumor at all. Okay. And patient yes. is clinically absolutely normal, taking full oral diet. Yes. Then how will you proceed? Sir, I would like to reconfirm the 
uh, the pathological clinical response by taking biopsies from the site where she had previous growths and where there is uh, the response tumor uh, reaction is seen post chemo radiation therapy and then uh, i would definitely like to confirm that and then proceed further with the uh, surgery sir rather than surveillance program do we have some sort of uh, uh, that uh, studies which are yes affecting the response rate and surveillance program uh, uh, sir there is sano trials and uh, isostrate trials what is sano? two trials which are what is sano Have you so read about Sano? Please, Sano. Yes, sir. It is uh, still an ongoing trial, sir. Actually, the results are expected to be uh, announced in late 2023, sir, this year. And uh, they have uh, the Sano trial program chart. I have, sir. Shall I show the chart, sir? Yeah, please. Ah. Uh, this is the sano protocol sir actually uh, the surgery as needed for esophageal cancer trial it compares active surveillance with standard esophagectomy for patients with clinically complete response to neoadjuvant chemo radiotherapy and this was designed sir actually there is inclusion of patients and patient receives neoadjuvant chemo radiation therapy for 6 weeks followed by evaluation of clinical response evaluation at, uh, there are three two clinical re response evaluation patient undergoes within a span of 4 to 6 weeks at any point of time whether there is no complete clinical response she will be placed placed in the uh, esophagectomy group sir once she shows a complete uh, response evaluation in uh, two times twice within a span of 4 to 6 weeks if it shows complete clinical response then the group is standard surgery and active surveillance if the patients are put in the active surveillance group there is every 3 to 3 months they evaluate further with an upper gi endoscopy ct scan and biopsy and for every 4 months for 6 to 8 months they evaluate with the same thing and follow after 8 months it is every 6 months for 9 to 10 months and after 11 to 12 months after one year it is every annually they measures this is an active surveillance program patient will be kept on complete active sur surveillance till the lesion is detected once the once it is detected then she will directly go for uh, standard surgery okay fair enough so uh, the patient responded well we are assuming yes. that the patient will respond well to the chemo radiation yes. then after chemo radiation completion of the chemo radiation you will wait for another 6 week for the results yes. to obtain and then yes. you will plan surgery yes. you are planning surgery for that patient now yes yes so what will be your approach for the surgery what kind of surgery you will offer uh, so we'll we'll go for minimal invasive esophagectomy sir it's more of a hybrid minimal invasive mckee wons three phase esophagectomy sir. what is hybrid mckee wons sir actually it's a combination of minimal invasive uh, thoracoscopy or laparotomy or uh, vice versa sir thoracotomy or laparoscopy where combination of both are used for esophageal mobilization or gastric tube formation and pull through and anastomosis in the neck with clearance of uh, uh, two lymph node stations two lymph node station is mackey one or three lymph node station is mackey one uh three lymph node stations are mackey one what what are the stations of lymph nodes 1 2 3 station 1 corresponds to abdominal lymph nodes station 2 is uh, thoracic and mediastinal lymph nodes station 3 is cervical lymph nodes right cervical is it right cervical sir is it right cervical lymph node no sir it is total bilateral cervical lymph okay so you will do uh, laparoscopy that is video assisted thoracoscopic mobilization of the esophagus with or without laparoscopic gastric tube formation or laparotomy with gastric tube formation and this, then gastric tube pull up and the hands on or stapler and to side or end to end what it will be end to end to end or end to side end to side like anastomosis end to side yes okay 
do you know how how much uh, how many kind of variations are there in uh, that neck and uh, yes sir there is one modified collared anastomosis into what it is what mm. it is and why it is why it is invented sir it uh, it is actually invented when the esophageal lumen uh, diameter is small uh, compared to the uh, when it is whenever it is resected the cervical esophagus whenever the luminal diameter is small in the in that case we can just extend and do a diamond shaped anastomosis to the stomach sir it's an end to side uh, modified collar anastomosis was invented because of mainly because of the luminal diameter size for the prevention of the esophago gastric Esophage. anastomosis stricture formation stricture. Structure formation. So it 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 has to. It, is it continuous or interrupted anastomosis? Uh, it is actually interrupted anastomosis. So if you are uh, going to answer the kind of anastomosis, then you have to elaborate the entire thing. Which uh, what kind of suture you will use? What kind of technique you will use? Whether it is continuous or interrupted or hands on or stapled. Okay. Okay. We use end to side. <clears throat> hand shear interrupted uh, uh, esophageal gastric anastomosis in the cervical region and what about pyloroplasty do you routinely use pyloroplasty for the no uh, we routinely don't use pyloroplasty actually as a drainage procedure okay what are the pros and cons of pylo pyloroplasty sir pyloroplasty will uh, increase the gastric emptying and it helps in uh, <clears throat> uh, pre, uh, just uh, passing out the contents smoothly sir as such uh, there is uh, no accumulation of uh, or uh, aspiration or uh, vomiting and other things can be prevented sir these are the prones of pyloroplasty uh, but the cons of it are uh, it can increase the bile reflux actually bile reflux gastritis and can cause esophagitis and also intestinal metaplasia could also be caused because of uh, pyloroplasty okay while making a, a gastric tube yes. once you will pull that gastric tube till your uh, neck in season and suddenly yes. you will see that this uh, tip of the gastric tube is bluish in color what will you yes. do how will you uh, sir, how will you make a decision whether this gastric tube and the tip of that gastric tube is well perfused or not because the entire thing this this is the crux of your anastomosis now yes the sir. commonest cause of esophag uh, do you know that uh, uh, this esophago gastric anastomosis is very precarious for leak you know that now uh, yes yes sir yes sir. it is more One chances of leak are there in cervical yes So, uh, why this is the, one of the most precarious anastomosis to be leak esophago gastric anastomosis in cervical incision? Why it is so precarious? Sir, because uh, uh, because of the blood supply, sir, uh, it could be under tension most of the time. Whenever we pull the tube through the uh, the thoracic region, which is very confined region. where it could cause a intraluminal pressure and intrathoracic pressure also could lead to uh, conduit ischemia or necrosis in further is and uh, if if there is a tension because we would have ligated the left gastroepiploic artery and there is no collateral formation as such it based on the right gastric and gastroepiploic artery and because of the tension also could lead to conduit necrosis or ischemia so that's why it's one of the precarious uh, anastomosis in the uh, sir, i mean cervical is most uh, one of the most common uh, uh, that cause of this uh, anastomosis to leak is uh, while pulling up that gastric tube na uh, it used yes. to be rotated because yes. we are pulling the gastric tube uh, without vision it is a blind mm -hmm. process na through the esophagus if you are doing thoracoscopic and something then we can have the vision if you are doing yes. transital esophagectomy then we are pulling the tube so we have to be very right. careful while pulling up that gastric tube it it has to be in the same alignment yes, yes. okay yes. so yes. do we have do we have some sort of newer investigation which can help us to determine the perfusion of this gastric tube intra op cholecystectomy may we used to use na huh? icgs 
so they see, see. right now right now many centers are using okay. for the both lower uh, colorectal surgeries as well as the eso esophageal surgery they are using for the uh, assessment of the perfusion of that stump so we can have if yes, we see. can have that thing, we can use this thing okay, okay. yes okay so post op day 3 suddenly patient yes. dub massive uh, swelling over the left cervical esophagus crepitations yes. are there with shortness of breath what will you do so first i would like to uh, examine the neck wounds for there any okay. uh, changes of uh, cellulitis or redness was there any collection and other things uh, so i would like to open the neck wound and see and if there is any collection will drain the collection most probably it could be the reason for all the symptoms sir. that's it you found a collection you will find a yes. collection there so yes. that is uh, implicating that there might be a leak yes cause leak collection as well as air will require for the crepitations na yes aerophasia patient used to have everyone have aerophasia while taking swallowing or anything if we are swallowing anything then aerophasia is yes. there so crepitation yes. is a indirect surrogate marker that there is a leak leak yes. how will you manage a post op day 3 leak is it, it so, can be managed conservatively or you will require some intervention for that leak no sir we will manage it conservatively mainly wound management is what is required actually will drain the collections keep the area dry and regular dressing sir what is required sir actually will manage it predominantly conservatively neck wound okay you routinely use drains for that this uh, esophageal surgery uh, sir cervical anastomosis we usually keep corrugated rubber drains crd for at least 3 days or well, 2 days at and then later will remove it. and for abdomen abdomen will keep sir will keep a drain uh, at least for 3 uh, to 5 days 3 uh, days maximum sir just to have a look at it and then after that following which if you feel uh, there is a draining of fluid and other things we'll just keep the drains we usually use your, crd and abdominal drains actually your colleague will call you <coughs> day 4th that the drain is draining uh, 400 ml uh, milkish fluid white is uh -huh. fluid what will you how yes. will you proceed further what will be your provisional diagnosis that the patient is suffering from something this kind of post op complication is there and we we have to manage accordingly sir so it is most probably the chyle leak because of uh, any lymphatic injury or thoracic duct injury sir so i would like to confirm the uh to confirm that sir chyle leak actually by sending uh, drain fluid uh, triglycerides and chylomicrons and would confirm whether it is chyle if uh, the chyle leak of 400 ml usually is managed conservatively by increasing the nutrition of the patient and uh, uh, increasing the diet and wait and watch sir actually and to uh, if the drain is present it, if it is draining the collection then uh, predominantly increasing the nutrition and conservative management is what we usually follow sir. Okay. So, do we have some Hello. evidences for the? Uh, sorry. Ah, uh, good morning, boss. Ah, uh, Kulbushan here. Yeah. yeah, Kulbushan. Good morning. Uh, can I ask something, boss? Yeah, yeah. Please, please. Uh, yes. Anna, uh, suppose uh, intraoperatively, uh, yes, while sir. doing surgery, uh, there yes. is like chyle. Okay. Why yes. is this sir? Yes. And how will yes, you manage? sir we will uh, try to identify the leak site sir actually if there are le identifiable leak site could be seen lymphatics which are leaking we try to clip it and ligate it and in spite of that if there is chyle leak which is noticed and we are not able to find then we'll uh, ligate the thoracic duct as caudal as possible near the diaphragm okay so what is the location of uh, this thoracic duct uh Uh, thoracic duct is located just in front of the vertebra is it is uh, running between the aorta and the azygous vein just behind the esophagus posterior to esophagus in front of vertebra between the aorta and the azygous vein 
and uh, one thing like uh, when i was was asking in uh, alta operatively when you pull the conduit yes. stomach conduit and there is uh, yes. uh, some kind of dusky uh, at the tip okay yes sir so like how will you like assess intraoperatively further how will you proceed sir uh, we'll just see the reason for that sir whether there is any twisting of the conduit or there is any stretching or any damage of the blood vessels along the uh, greater curvature of the stomach or right gash epiploic artery any arterial damage is there or not and then we'll just wait and watch with high flow oxygen and multiple hot mops will keep and see sir and then uh, if it turns normal and then uh, it can be uh, viable if it is viable then we'll proceed with the anastomosis Hmm. Am I audible? Sorry. Sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Uh, am yeah, I doctor. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You are audible. Yes, sir. Anna, please. How will you proceed? Okay. Sir. You are audible, Kulbushan. What do you want to ask? I am asking, sir, the same question. Like, okay, uh, uh, there is a, a duskiness uh, at the tip. Okay, when you pull the conduit, then on on table, what will you do? Like, how will you uh, proceed further? Yes, sir. Uh, we'll look for the <clears throat> we'll look for the reason of uh, duskiness, sir. Actually, whether there is any twisting of the. Uh, gastric conduit whatever we have created was there any excessive pull or damage to the vessels which are always there sir and then uh, in spite of that if we notice that uh, the uh, the viability can be uh, is is not it is not viable the whatever gastric conduit we have created is not viable then we'll plan an alternative procedure if not initially we'll see all these things maneuvers will do and if there is a excessive pull we try to cauterize and release some part of the duodenum so that the pull is uh, lessened and uh, and we'll wait for the duskiness to settle down we'll use uh, high flow oxygen and uh, hot uh, cell line mops to just look for the viability of the bowel and after in spite of that if it is not viable then we'll plan an alternative sir if not if the tissue is viable then we'll proceed further ahead with the anastomosis thank you <laughs> Uh, continue, I think Kulbushan. Hello. Uh, yes. uh, I think Anagiri has Anagiri has summarized the case very well, and he has included uh, all the aspects of the post uh, management intra op, pre op, and post op. Yeah, was actually I have joined late. Uh, I was uh, like uh, busy yeah, yeah. with some. Uh, no, actually, he has already elaborated all the pre-op management, nutrition part, intra-op, and post-op, and we have already discussed the post-op complications also. So, uh, okay. I think uh, we we can close this session. Uh, Anagri, you want to show something? Some, is, or you have, uh, I have shown everything? Uh, I have, I have shown. These are the actually, trials. Yeah. So, uh, actually, uh, new adjuvant and uh, adjuvant therapy for esophageal and gastric cancer is a big. Uh, topic yes, sir. so yes. uh, we will we will have some other classes for the that thing yes but you being as a being as a surgical gastroenterol uh, gastroenterologist you should know all these trials relevant yes. trials not all relevant yes. trials and what are the current evidences in favor of the treatment pre op post op and uh, intra op so yes. it's because oncology is a changing field Every day we have some other newer molecule. We have some newer techniques. So yes. we have to update ourselves. We have to make ourselves up to date with all these things. Na? So uh, yes. uh, you have you have made the presentation very well. Initially, you have presented very well pre-op. And right now, you have included everything. So uh, I think we, sh uh, we can close this session. Yes. Yeah, Kulbushan, we can close. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes.